This is Tips for Travellers. Inspiration, advice and tips on finding and having amazing travel experiences on both land and at sea. Get more tips on must-see and must-do travel at tipsfortravellers.com. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and welcome to another episode of Tips for Travellers. And on today's show, we're going to be looking at 10 ways that a river cruise is different to an ocean cruise. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know that today's podcast is brought to you by audible.com. You can get a free audio book download and a 30-day free trial by simply going to tipsfortravellers.com slash audible. And I'll put that link in the show notes. You can choose from over 180,000 titles. You can play them on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, your MP3 player. And you can keep the free audiobook download even if you decide not to go on and subscribe after your 30-day free trial. So that's tipsatravels.com slash audible. So let's get into today's uh, topic, which is 10 ways a river cruise is different to an ocean cruise. And it's based on my experiences of both. And it's designed to help you decide whether a river or an ocean cruise is better for you or if you're considering switching either from a river to an ocean or an ocean to river, uh, you know, it'll help you hopefully make up your mind. So let's get stuck into the 10 reasons. The first that I'm going to give you is a really obvious one, which is size. And the most obvious difference is the size of the ships and also the cabins. You know, so ocean cruise ships can range from relatively small by ocean uh, cruise ship uh, size, uh, yacht style ships. So, for example, Windstar uh, run a series of sort of yacht style ships like the Star Breeze that have been on uh, through to average. You know, they might have uh, you know a couple of hundred passengers. Then you've got something you know mid sized ships like Cunard Queen Elizabeth, which has around you know sort of one thousand nine hundred two thousand passengers. Then you go right up to the enormous you know Royal Caribbean ships, which can carry thousands of guests. And you know, uh, increasingly you'll see uh, different uh, cruise lines announcing they're bringing a new ship with five thousand two hundred guests or whatever. And the trend in ocean cruising is definitely towards bigger and bigger ships. And even the lines that have traditionally had smaller ships are launching bigger ships. And it's all to do with growing demand and also the economics. So with uh, ocean cruising, you know, size is really uh, one way of uh, sort of managing and improving profitability, I guess. On the other hand, river ships have to be small to navigate along the rivers, under the bridges that cross them. So, you know, I've been on uh, some ships where I've had, you know, 120 guests. You're never going to have more than about 180, 200 guests on a river cruise boat. So, you know, size, it's much, much smaller. It's much more intimate. It's a much more social experience uh, because there's less places to hide, basically, less places to be anonymous. Cabins on cruise ships also tend to be larger than on river cruise ships. So again, you know, size is really uh, limited on uh, river cruise ships. So you know, some of the premium lines are trying to introduce more suites, etc. But overall, you'll find that river cruise ships cabins are, you know, un- are likely to be smaller than on ocean cruise ships. The second key difference is in terms of destinations, where they go. So ocean cruises obviously at sea, river cruises obviously on the river. But there's some nuances in that. So ocean cruises cover huge distances. They uh, can visit multiple countries in a week. And so they tend to give you more of an overview of flavor for region. I think there's probably four different itineraries on an ocean. You One where you could be perhaps sailing along the coastline, calling at various uh, seaside ports, you know, for example, around the Mediterranean. Or secondly, they hop between islands, like in the Caribbean. Or thirdly, they journey between continents. So you've got like the Queen Mary II, for example, which uh, during the summer season, uh, you know, moves back basically backwards towards between uh, Southampton and New York. Or fourthly, they take you to very remote places like the Arctic or the Antarctic or the Galapagos or whatever. So, you know, they tend to be um, those kind of itineraries. River cruises, they obviously sail on inland rivers and they go to places that cruise ships are either too large, too big, can't go to. And they tend to cover less distances. So, you know, on average, a river cruise probably only travels as much uh, in a day as perhaps a two hour bus trip would take. So I've been on river cruises before where we for, you know, the the river's been very low, for example. So we've actually just taken a bus to the place we were going to be in to go on a tour. And it's taken an hour and a half, two hours to get there on a bus. So, 
you know, they tend to uh, go less distances and they may stop at two places often in a day, which you tend not to do on an ocean cruise. So they, they tend to provide a much more in, <clears throat> intensive immersion of a region. So they travel smaller distances, calling it more places in a, in a smaller place, uh, in a smaller region, should I say, uh, than an ocean cruise ship. Another big difference um, related to destinations is also where they dock. So, you know, cruise ships, particularly as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they often have to dock in container ports, working ports, you know, which have facilities to cope with just the scale of the ship and the numbers of people. And so you might find there's quite a distance to transfer into towns. You might be quite a long way out of town. You know, smaller ships, for example, like Windstar, Star Breeze, some of the seaborne ships, they can moor much closer to the heart of towns and maybe tender in. On the other hand, river boats will dock in the heart of towns, you know, and usually right where the action is within walking distance. You can normally get off the river boat and you're there in the town, right in the heart of the town. Sometimes in busy towns, you might actually be sort of stacked up. So they might actually tie the ships uh, side by side and you actually have to walk through the ships to get there. But generally, you'll be right there in the heart of things. You know, so an ocean cruise you know, tends to give you more breadth of a region. They tend to dock further away from the heart of cities. Not always, of course. River cruising will cover a smaller region much more intensively in the same amount of time and generally dock close to the centre of town. Third key difference is excursions. Now, ocean cruises will offer lots of excursion options at every stop. So, you know, often they've got hundreds or thousands of guests. So they will offer lots and lots of different excursion options. You know, there could be, you know, very active ones, you know, uh, quad bikes, uh, right through to sedate panorama bus sites, you just sit on a bus. Excursions are almost always an added cost, can cost you between $40, $200 or more per person. However, river cruises do it slightly differently they tend to only offer one excursion per destination. Now, there are some exceptions, but generally there'll be one excursion. They're more than likely going to be a walking tour. They're going to be focused on history, art, culture, or food and wine. And uh, they normally are included. Uh, there's a couple of exceptions there, but largely, uh, you know, the excursion is included. So ocean cruise, you're going to have lots and lots of choice because obviously there's lots of people, lots of um, diversity. Whereas on river cruise, they'll say, this is the tour you've got or you can go self-touring. You know, so cruise lines, lots of choice. They'll charge from river cruises tend to be included. Fourth key difference is when it comes to food and dining. You know, cruise ships will have choices of where and when to dine. Even the smallest ships will have choices. Yeah, so normally within your fare, you'll have a main dining room. You might have a buffet restaurant. You might have room service. Uh, wine will be charged extra. But most of them have speciality restaurants, which will have a surcharge in most cases. Now, if you look at large ships, you know, the Norwegian Cruise Line ships or Royal Caribbean, they can have as many as 15 different places that you can go and eat. Now, you might have to play a surcharge in those, but they do have huge amounts of choice of different things. You know, you might have, a, you know, a steak restaurant, a, a sushi restaurant, a Italian, whatever. On river cruise lines, they normally have one dining room and they'll normally have a buffet breakfast. They might have a buffet lunch or a, a three course lunch and a three course dinner. They're often ten there often won't be room service there often will not be a second dining room there'll be one thing and wine will be included so if you're very interested in variety and choice then ocean cruising is probably going to appeal much more than river cruising the fifth key difference is around entertainment you know on a cruise ship there's going to be lots of entertainment there might be very high production west end broadway style shows they'll have guest entertainers like comedians or magicians or you know singers there'll be nightclubs there'll be dancing there'll be musicians there'll be bands you know lots of different venues lots of different bars there'll be a daily program which will have you know, I don't know craft classes digital classes bridge games quizzes all sorts of things going on river cruise ships will be much lower key uh, they may not even have very much choice. And it might be, you know, pianists playing in the bar. They might have a few evenings of folk music or folk dances or perhaps a daily port talk. There won't be lots of quizzes and things going on. Um, so there's a really big difference in entertainment. Sort of linked to that, and maybe the same point is uh, point number six, amenities. You know, on a, a cruise ship, depending on the cruise ships, you could have massive resort-like facilities. You could have climbing walls, water slides, a huge spa, fitness center, sports facilities, you know, bumper cars, ice drinks, whatever. You could have swimming pools, kids clubs, hot tubs, bars, lounges, libraries, all that kind of stuff. Now, river cruises 
will not have those amenities. A couple might have some plunge pools. They might have a tiny little fitness center within a bike or two. They might have a spa, which will basically be, you know, probably one person who does hairdressing and some spa treatments. They might have a little library, but they're going to be really limited. You might have a combined bar lounge. Uh, you'll have a large uh, open deck on the top level. There won't be kids clubs. There won't be a casino, that kind of stuff. You know, the, the, the ship is not really going to be a resort. And in fact, the ship only cruises for a limited amount of time during the day, unlike, you know, a, a big cruise ship, which you might be cruising, you know, from five o'clock in the evening to eight o'clock the next morning, and it needs to keep people busy. It, you know, river cruise boats tend to cruise only for a limited amount of time of the day. It's docked a lot of the time, so you can step off the ship, go for a walk, go for a run, use a bike, you know, whatever you want to do. So often you'll find if there are things you want to do, you'll do them off the boat. A lot of cruise ships, you, you know, are really like destinations in themselves, lots of facilities, lots of amenities, whereas river cruises boats, just because of their size, they don't have those. So the focus tends to be on the destination rather than things to do on board. Seventh key difference is inclusions. So if you look at the cost, you know, per day of an ocean cruise compared to a river cruise, at first glance, it will appear to be cheaper, much cheaper in many cases, but you can't really compare exactly the two. Uh, river cruises often tend to be a little bit more expensive overall anyway but you just can't compare the two because on an ocean cruise there will be a lot of onboard costs there will be things like drinks wi-fi which can be as much as a dollar a minute gratuities which could be as much as 15 dollars or more a person excursions you know 50 dollars to 200 dollars a person specialty dining charges you know you could spend 50 percent or more of your fare on onboard expenditure um and obviously, some of the lines like Silver Sea, Seabourn, Windstar, Azamara, they include some of these things in their, their fare. And Region 7 Seas even includes excursions. But river cruises tend to be mostly all inclusive. So they'll cover your drinks, their food, your Wi Fi. Uh, a lot of them will include gratuities, and most of them will include excursions. Not all of them will include excursions. So when you're comparing fares, you need to really look at the add on cost to really look at the real difference. But overall, it's likely to be yeah, that a river cruise is slightly more expensive overall. The other thing that's interesting when it comes to fares is you're more likely to get a last minute deal on an ocean cruise than a river cruise. Obviously, ocean cruises, you know, there's much bigger, there's much more capacity on the ship. So you can often wait for last minute deals or decide close to time. River cruising is growing fast, there's lots more capacity, but they tend to book out much further in advance. So you'll tend to find there's less last minute deals and you have to plan much more. The other key difference is seasickness. You know, modern cruise ships have lots of technology. They have stabilizers that reduce motion. There's, you know, lots of technology so they can avoid, uh, you know, storms and things like that. But if you're very prone to motion sickness, you may get seasick. It's a risk that you take. You know, you can minimize it. You can book a cabin sort of in the middle of the ship and lower it down. You can take um, various over the counter remedies, all that kind of stuff. There are things that you can do, but there is obviously a risk because, you know, you might be sailing at night or on sea days and you might get seasick. On the other hand, it's basically pretty much impossible to get motion sick on the river. Uh, you know, the rivers don't really, there's not going to be swells and motion, that kind of stuff. Land is always within really close uh, proximity. There's not a lot of, you know, it's a limited amount of time sailing. It's very unlikely you're going to get seasick. Ninth difference is packing. Now, it depends differs a little bit based on what you're going on. But river cruise boats tend to be much more informal. So there's not a lot of dressing up, even on formal nights. You know, it might just be a long sleeve shirt and slacks or, you know, a smartish dress. So it tends to be a little bit more informal. Whereas on cruise lines, depending which one you go, you might have very formal nights. So if you go on like uh, Cunard, for example, they have tuxedos, uh, you know, nights, a couple of nights a week. They have, you know, they're, even their informal evenings, you expect to wear a jacket. So it depends a little bit on your cruise line. Obviously, it varies a little bit, but it tends to be in the evenings a little bit of a smarter dress code. Uh, and so there's more when it comes to packing. There's there's some key differences there. But river cruising tends to be a little bit more casual. Certainly, whenever I go on a river cruising, I take less clothes because I don't need as many f more formal or smart clothes. The last point, the key difference is uh, in terms of how regimented it is. So an ocean cruising can be as regimented as you want it to be. There's likely to be much more flexibility in where you can dine, when you can dine, you know, 24 hour dining options often. Uh, you don't have, 
because you're having uh, you know excursions included you can uh, do whatever you want to do it's just much less regimented and there's much more choice of things to do a river cruise tends to be much more regimented so you'll find you know breakfast at a certain time everyone needs to eat then you're heading on the included excursion you'll come back there'll be a meal there'll be uh, you know, perhaps another excursion or, or you'll be sailing or there'll be dinner. So there's much less flexibility and meal times are much more set. The day is much more planned. So, you know, what you do when you get uh, on an ocean cruise, you'll get the daily program, which might have you know, a choice of five or six things to do at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, whatever. Uh, lots of flexibility in terms of dining. On a river cruise, it'll pretty much be, this is what we're doing at eight, this is what we're doing at nine. We know we're on excursion from 8.30 to whatever, blah, blah, blah. So it'll be much more uh, regimented. So that's an important thing to consider. So there you have it. That's 10 key differences that I have thought of uh, between ocean and river cruising. If you have any more ideas, I'd love to hear from those. If you look in the show notes, you'll find links to uh, the site. You'll also, of course, you can email me or leave a link on, uh, you know, by clicking on uh, this particular episode and leaving your thoughts on key differences between river and ocean cruising. I'd love, love to hear from you. Just a reminder, of course, that, uh, that today's podcast was brought to you by audible.com. And if you go to tipsatravelers.com slash audible, always remembering that travelers is spelled with two L's, tipsatravelers.com slash audible, you can get a free audio uh, book download and a 30-day free trial. And you get to keep that audio book whether you carry on after your free uh, free 30-day trial or not. 180,000 titles. You can play on iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player. So that's tipsofdrivers.com slash audible. Be great if you're thinking of getting a real book. If you use that link, I get a small commission. It doesn't cost you anything extra at all. So, um, you know, it'd be really great if you support uh, support me through doing that if you're thinking of, you know, getting audio books. Uh, if this is the first time you listen to the podcast, really appreciate it. If you're a regular listener, love it. Love it if you left me a review if you haven't done one before. And to make that easy, again, tipsfortravelers.com slash iTunes TFT for iTunes, Stitcher TFT, uh, Google Play TFT, TuneIn TFT. Again, all those links in the show notes. Please subscribe, leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. And whether you're going on an ocean cruise or a river cruise, I love both of them. Hopefully that's helped you make up your mind between the two. But whatever you do, have a wonderful, wonderful time. 